host uh, great men and women of our land that are going to be sharing key nuggets on leadership. And uh, without any further ado, I want to introduce them. And we will have a word of prayer, and then we will get into the deep diving, into the leadership discussion. I am Prem Tumramye, who will be your host uh, today, and you are most welcome. So, right next to me is the Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyonyi, the former Vice Chancellor of Uganda Christian University. Dr. John, you are most welcome. Uh, good evening, viewers. Thank you. And uh, right next to him is Canon Edward Gamua, uh, former director and senior consultant, Acclaim Africa. He also worked with the World Vision and also worked as former chair of National Social Security Fund. Canon, you're most welcome. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much. And right next to Canon, we have Honorable Sarah Chiinji <coughs> Chama former State Minister of Internal Affairs, and was also Member of Parliament, Rakai District, very many years ago. Mm -hmm. Honorable, you're welcome. Good evening, viewers. Thank you. And right at the extreme end, we have Dr. Eki Chikure, who is former Mild May uh, Director of Quality Assurance, and currently works as principal for the Training Institute of Hospice Africa, and also lectures at the UCU or Uganda Christian University School of Medicine. Doctor, you're most welcome. Thank you, and I want to wave to my grandchildren. <laughs> Good, and they are right there watching. Uh, we want to start off with a word of prayer, and I'll invite Reverend Canon Dr. John to lead us in a word of prayer. Let us pray. <coughs> Dear loving and gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come to you to speak about something that we believe is dear to your heart. And that is leadership. Because you are a leader and we need to be able to learn leadership from you. So we ask for your presence with us. We ask for your Holy Spirit to speak to us that he may speak through us. And that every word that will come through our lips will be that which has come from you. May you moderate and superintend all our discussions for the benefit of many to the glory and honor of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Dr. John. Like I already mentioned, our topic or what we are going to be discussing today is God-dependent leadership, the inspired leader. And I want to go to Honorable Sarah. When we say God-dependent leadership or the inspired leader, what does it mean? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, good evening, viewers, once again. Uh, thank you for uh, coming to, to listen to us. And uh, I want to start by uh, saying that my when, when I was given this topic, I was, when I received this topic I reflected on inspired leadership and uh, thanks to Google I also thought I should find out <laughs> what what does the word you know how does the word inspired you know inspire where does it come from and what I found is that uh, it comes from a Latin word that means to inflame or to blow to blow into and the word was originally used to, to, of a divine or supernatural being in the sense of imparting a truth or an idea to someone. So when you inspire something, it is as if you are blowing air over a low flame to make it grow. You know, you, to, 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 it reminds me of even these, uh, if you've ever seen these, uh, uh, these, <laughs> I'm almost speaking in Uganda. These, these, uh, <laughs> speaking uh, in Uganda, this is what? <laughs> <laughs> there are those, 
anyway, let me leave it. The word has refused to come. So when you inspire something, you are blowing that flame. You are to make that uh, whatever you are you are working on to make it grow. Uh, so we can therefore say that an inspired leader is leadership whose strength uh, or fire <coughs> or sustenance comes from the Lord. And so in view of all that, I thought uh, every leader should be inspired by God. Leadership, because the Bible yeah. says <coughs> that whole leadership comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I think every leader should be inspired by, by the Lord. And depending on God, you know, is a, therefore is a must. If you are going to be inspired, that inspiration should be what you draw from. You are depending on, on, on that inspiration to, to, to do the work that you are doing. And uh, of course, uh, as we know the Bible, no wonder the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in everything acknowledge him <coughs> and he will guide your paths. So by acknowledging, you are saying, Lord, you are the one and as a result he guides you over he blows that fire that sustenance uh, will come to you and uh, you are not leading on, 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 on your own um, god inspired leadership uh, in my understanding does not necessarily mean that every decision you have to take as a leader you run to the lord every decision because that will cripple your yeah. ability to lead. I was actually thinking you for every decision you're going to leave the boardroom, <laughs> run to your closet, <laughs> ask exactly. God what does it have for me to do in this place and then God alerts you and then you run back to the boardroom and say come on guys <laughs> this is what God is saying. Then so that what will, does that, <laughs> that will actually be, mean for you yeah. to practically be depending on God? It will cripple your leadership if you are going to keep running in and out to say God what are you saying? Mm. But a God inspired leadership is a relationship with God. Mm. It starts with a relationship with God. Mm. And we, you go to God as a way of life. Mm. You acknowledge that you know he is your life. You go to him, and uh, as a way of, of as a way of life, you become familiar with him. Not familiar, not in the negative sense, mm. but you you get familiar with his word, with what he says, how he says it, and it is through his word, you know, the Bible, because he says these words I speak to you, that is John 6, 63, these words I speak to you are spirit and their life. Mm -hmm. So you become familiar to how he speaks so that <coughs> even in a time of taking a decision, you know that this is not, this is not inspired from God. I have uh, uh, a daughter who uh, just a few <coughs> days ago, <coughs> not a few days actually, yesterday, he works for an organization which is, uh, he does some work for that organization which is abroad and uh, they uh, recently sent her a message saying you should, uh, you know, you know this talk of uh, the bill that was uh, the, the gay eh? homosexuality mm -hmm. bill and homosexuality bill and she was uh, being asked to say something in opposition to the to the bill, mm -hmm. and she's saying <laughs> this is uh, you know because she knows the word what the word says about that 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 situation, so she can't be comfortable. But because she knows the word, so if you are not <coughs> familiar with what God says, mm -hmm. you are not going to be able to take the God-inspired decision because you don't know what God says. So I think God inspired must be familiar with God's word. And as, <coughs> and as we build that kind of relationship with him, our hearts begin to desire what God desires. Mm -hmm. Our hearts begin to, 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 to go out to what, uh, you know, to do good from God's point of view because 
God is good and his goodness, you know, in uh, Acts, Acts 10, 38, you know, talks, ab talks about Jesus who went around doing good and, you know, healing all the people. It was that goodness because Jesus was also inspired, you know, he was God, but he was also inspired by God because he said the things I do, I get from the Father. Mm -hmm. So we, we get that inspiration and that inspiration becomes part of us mm -hmm. that God, maybe this, this may sound like, oh, how can you say that? But God flows and works through us mm -hmm. without us saying now this is God's decision or I'm running to ask God. Of course we pray and mm -hmm. as we pray, we also get that inspiration uh, from God. And the Bible has several examples of uh, God-dependent leaders or God-inspired leaders. In Exodus 33, 15, uh, Moses said, if your presence does not go with us, we will not go. We don't want to go away from here. We want to, because he was depending on God to, to guide them, to lead them, and uh, to, to show them the way. And then we have uh, Joseph. Uh, this was a very good story where Joseph, uh, when he went, the, the king called him to interpret the, the, the dream that the king had had. Uh, so the Pharaoh, Pharaoh, it was Pharaoh. So Pharaoh answer, uh, Joseph answered Pharaoh. In the, uh, Genesis 41, 16 says that Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer because he, he just knew that whatever he was doing was not his own. Mm -hmm. He was depending on God to, to give the answer, but Pharaoh was looking at Joseph and Joseph was saying, no, it's not me. I ca personally, I cannot give you the answer, but God, through him, of course, was going to give Pharaoh uh, the answer. And uh, there are many examples. Solomon asked for wisdom. He said, God, <laughs> these people of yours I cannot lead unless you give me the wisdom. That was because he wanted, he knew that that depend, but that dependence, I believe Solomon did not wait until he was there and then he said, oh, what do I do? Let me run to God. I think he had a relationship. He knew God and as a result of knowing God, he knew that he can only do whatever he, he was calling him to do uh, uh, by going back to him. And, the, and, and other examples, <coughs> Jehoshaphat and, and, and Jesus himself, our greatest role model for leadership said, I do nothing of myself. But as my father taught me, I speak these things. And, uh, and then he said, I speak what I have seen with my father. So he had that relationship. Mm -hmm. And out of that relationship, he was speaking the things that he knew his father wanted. That, that inspiration to do whatever he was doing was from, uh, from the father. He did only what the father said. That is John chapter 8, for those who want the scriptures, John chapter 8, 38, and then John chapter 5, verse 19 uh, to 20. Thank you, Honorable, and I'll get back to you uh, about that. Very profound, very deep, God-dependent leadership, the inspired leader. And you clearly bring out a lot of uh, biblical examples of great men uh, that traversed the earth did great things. Mm -hmm. And probably a leader out there is thinking, well, I could try, but I cannot be like a Moses, mm -hmm. leading a bunch of disobedient mm -hmm. people, as, as we see the Bible clearly explaining mm -hmm. how the Israelites gave Moses a really, really hard time in leading them. Uh, Canon Edward, please tell us, when we look at some of those examples, that Honorable Star was sharing about. Do we see them failing at some point, or do we see them as mini-gods 
And when we look at their example, we cannot relate as we live on earth and lead on earth because we are leading human beings who are bound to be disobedient, who are bound to give us a headache as we lead. Uh, yeah, I want us to draw lessons from those leaders that she already shared about, who were inspired by God, what were their struggles, how did they overcome the struggles, so that the leader that is seeing us can easily relate and connect and be able to know that if they did this, maybe I am also able to pull through. If they struggled with this, I am not alone in this struggle. I can draw lessons and uh, lead on. Over to you, Kano. Thank you very much, Prim. <coughs> I think of the examples that uh, have been given to us and uh, it is true that they desire to do to, to be dependent on God. Mm -hmm. the, the one thing that we need to emphasize uh, is uh, as we think about the leaders out there mm -hmm. is to know that every leader mm -hmm. is put there by God. That emphasis is made very, very clearly in the Bible. Mm. Uh, it is made in Daniel, it is made in Romans, it is made in First Peter. So every leader is put there by God. And therefore, this, the, the Moses knows that he was actually called by God. Mm. He knew he was there to do the will of God, not, not his own will. Mm. And therefore, he knows that even when these people disturb him, he, he is pursuing something that is not his own. And so he says, if your presence doesn't go with us, mm. I, I don't go. I'm not doing my will. Mm. And I think Sarah has quoted that, that the Lord Jesus Christ kept saying, I have not come to do my own will. I have come to do the will mm. of God. Mm. So a leader must be conscious that they are doing the will, the will. of God. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter whoever it is, there is that consciousness that I'm doing the will of God and that the things that I do will glorify God. If, if you do things which don't glorify God, you are not doing the will of God and you are not being dependent on God. So you, you have to be conscious that what I do, I am glorifying God. And to glorify God, I think that to, it would be to mind what the people need. So Moses now and again kept going to God and saying, these people are like this, these people are like this. I am here to do your will, to serve the people. We, all of us, <coughs> when we have the responsibility to lead, it is not about us. It's about the people that we lead. So if, if we have that idea that we are here to serve the people, then we will emulate what the Lord did, we will emulate what uh, Jesus did. There, there are people who didn't realize that, like uh, uh, King Solomon. King Solomon asked for wisdom, and yet he diverted himself from the will of God, and that really crippled in the kingdom. You remember that after Solomon, the kingdom was divided into two because he failed to systematically and obediently pursue the will of God. God had told him not to worship other gods because they would mislead him and he would marry foreigners. And he did that. So, even Solomon, I think sometimes we struggle to do the will of God. That is very true. But if we are armed with this one thing that we want to be obedient because we are doing the will of God and we must serve the people. I think that for me that, 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 that connection is very, very key. Mm -hmm. To do the will of God, you must serve the people, the people of God. Mm -hmm. You can't do the will of God and serve your own mm -hmm. interests. Mm -hmm. And to do the will of God, you need the humility of God. And Jesus was very clear. He said, learn from me, for I am humble at heart and meek. So if we, if, we, if we don't think about ourselves more highly than you ought to think, then we will think and look at the needs of the people that God has called us 
uh, to serve. And whatever we do, we will try to meet those needs. Mm. Uh, I, I think. Yes, please, doctor. I think that's what I want to start at the moment. Yeah. Uh, let me just emphasize two things. One, we are not leadership gurus. Mm. Okay. Um, but we we had been thrown into positions of leadership. Mm. And when you see our kind of age, there, there were no um, bachelors of leadership or something, you know. <laughs> so no workshops. So we just had to say, now what do I do? Out. Figure it out. Secondly, it's very, very important that the leader, as Sarah had said, has a relationship with mm -hmm. God. And therefore, <coughs> is, is in a habit of asking God and listening and uh, obeying. Mm -hmm. One of the, the leaders that really inspires me is Joshua. Mm -hmm. Okay, because when we hear from God, it doesn't mean that we don't plan, it doesn't mean that we don't do the things the leader should do. Mm -hmm. uh, Joshua was given instructions by God and then he went to his commanders and said, you do this, sit the people, go around. He had strategy mm. as a military commander, and he continued, mm -hmm. okay? Because God had given him direction, mm. and the assurance that you will win. Mm. But he did not sit there and say, hallelujah, we, we, uh, you know. No, he went, he had, he had strategy, he planned, and so when we are inspired, mm. we, we do what we've been inspired to do among the ordinary things of life, mm -hmm. okay? We plan, we consult, we write, nowadays emails, Zoom, whatever. These things we do as part of that inspiration mm. to bring the leadership God has ordained for us mm -hmm. before the people. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Eki, and uh, we are going to go for a short break very soon, but before we go for that break, mm. uh, as you shared, I kept wondering, <coughs> is there something like accidental leadership? <laughs> Have people fallen into things. things accidentally, maybe because of their charisma, because of where they are born and who mm. birthed them, and uh, what happens? If, if a leader is, is in a leadership role and it is, it is by default, they, they didn't think about it, they don't see God in the equation, they find themselves there, mm. what, what happens? How do we help such a leader? <laughs> I think the only thing that we hear from the Bible is that leaders are instituted by God. Sure. Now sometimes it's very difficult and when you talk of an accident, I would bring the example of Idi Amin here in Uganda. <laughs> Was he instituted by God? But even this guy away even from Idi Amin, even among our leaders now, not everyone is perfect, and we know we have enough scandals to testify to that. Sure. There's, uh, so did God put there those leaders? And the Bible flatly says, yes. Now, when God puts you in a position of leadership, it does not mean that by virtue of your being in leadership, you are actually being led by God. That's where the problem is. And that's why we are here. And we are saying that the, the one who puts you there also sets your agenda, rather than you setting it for yourself. So, I think we've got to recognize, uh, and I think it has been said again and again here, that it's very important that the leader, whatever position you have been placed in, you are doing the will of God. If you are not, you are disobeying. Mm. And that disobedience comes back to you. I mean, Solomon was cited here. Mm. He started out well, and God said, I'll be with you. I'm giving you what you want, and I'm even giving you more. I'll give you all the wealth you need, although you only ask for wisdom. Mm -hmm. But eventually, what did God do? He was disappointed. The mm -hmm. same thing happened with the soul. Mm -hmm. Instituted by God. Mm -hmm. But eventually, God forsook that leader. And I think we can say that. It's a very difficult thing for us to take. Mm 
because we see things from a human standpoint mm. and I guess when we get to heaven we will be set straight when we now look th at things sure. from the other side sure. and then we will understand oh this is what it was it meant, meant to be now dear viewer if you had no reason for going to heaven that gives you one <laughs> other critical reason <laughs> to go to heaven and uh, be yes, able answers. to look back <laughs> and see, wow, this is why these dots were falling in these places. In Africa, we have a proverb that having a good discussion is like having riches. You do not know how rich I already feel. I hope you feel that way because wealth is being given at no cost right here. <laughs> Dr. John, we ended at the accidental leadership. <laughs> And uh, you, you gave us hope that even when you accidentally fall into leadership, mm. once you recognize the one who put you into that leadership, mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. turn that leadership for mm -hmm. good and for the glory of God. Mm. Uh, I have had, I have not been at the top, I am still dreaming. When I look <laughs> at all of you, you are my goals. Yeah, you've had young people say, when I grow up, I want to be <laughs> like yes. you. Yeah, so I am still in the journey. But one thing that I've clearly heard is people say, it is lonely at the top. Mm. Mm. Are there support systems to handle that loneliness? Because mm. much as I want to get to the top, I don't want to get to a lonely zone. <laughs> is there support yeah. that people can get? Yeah, It can indeed be very lonely. Because once you go up, everyone expects you to be a giver mm. Mm. and never one who receives. Mm. Mm. Uh, so part of the responsibility actually falls on you, the leader. One of the things that has been emphasized in this talk is the importance of that relationship with God. Sure. That one, nobody will ever give you. Mm. You yourself have got to say that the Bible that I was reading before is still before me, I must continue reading it. The prayers that I was having, I will continue with them. The fellowship of brethren that were there are still there. Mm. And therefore, keep yourself out there ready to, uh, to, to use the same resources that have been nurturing you as a believer. Because you cannot separate your leadership from your walk with Christ. It's important that the two go together. But secondly, we as a group, of course, did uh, decide quite a few years ago, more than a decade ago, we decided that, look, uh, and some of us were still actually active in positions of office leadership. Okay, I call it office leadership because leadership in many ways does not stop. Sure. So, and we decided that it was important for us to pray for them. Part of the problem that often occurs when the leader distances himself or herself, mm. then the people also draw back. Mm. And even the Christians spend their time seeing the wrongs you are doing without ever coming to you to give you the support. So we decided that was important for us to give that kind of support. First and foremost in prayer. Because it's God who put you in that position. And for that reason it is important that you are prayed for, you are supported before God to continue working with Him. But secondly, also visiting with them and sharing God's word so that they know there are people out there who are not spending all their time criticizing you. But these are people that want to support you. But also thirdly, one of the things personally that was very useful, in many cases when people talk about leadership and how to learn to really fit into the role, they talk about, you see the other example, you see the other example. Now, for me, yes, I saw those examples, but at the same time, uh, which, which became more prominent in my life in the position of leadership, was also to see the wrong things they were doing. Mm -hmm. And then realize that those pitfalls you need to avoid. Mm -hmm. Don't walk like that. Mm -hmm. So let the leader's eyes be <coughs> opened mm -hmm. to really think, you know, what is it exactly? And the final thing uh, that I want to mention very briefly, is the importance of cultivating, and this is related to the first one, I guess, that I mentioned, the importance of cultivating a godly life. Mm. A godly life. Mm. 
For example, one of the biggest temptations in positions of leadership, especially when you are in an office, mm -hmm. is to start thinking that everyone there lives to serve you. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Let me take the example of the church. One of the things that I was told when I was being installed as a deacon was that the, de the diaconate in the Anglican church never ceases. In other words, you're a deacon for life. It does not matter whether you become an archbishop, a bishop, a canon, or whatever. Mm. You are still a deacon. Why? Because the deacon is there to serve. Okay? Mm. And these days I've been telling people that you see what happens is you leave the diaconate and you become a priest or you become a bishop. What is happening there? You are actually now becoming a chief servant. <laughs> rather than thinking I'm there for people to serve me. And so many times I think we fail to look at the Lord Jesus Christ and the way he did things. And that's why it is important for us to reflect on leadership his way. That the higher you go, the bigger the servant or the greater the servant you should be, rather than to be served. Very profound. The higher you go, the bigger the servant you should perceive uh, as your calling. Honorable Sarah, what support systems are there for today's <coughs> leader building on what uh, Dr. <coughs> John has mentioned? Well, one of the things that I can think of is, uh, <coughs> of course, there are in, in the current situation, there are all these trainings and the Zoom that uh, as a uh, Professor mentioned, but also in the Bible you see that uh, leaders were mentored. They are, and and uh, Jesus, for instance, he called the disciples, put mm. them aside, and then uh, trained them as he went. And then he said, mm. "Well, now there you are, and mm. I'm even going to send you a helper." Mm. When, when uh, he even said, "Don't get out of this place until." I send the helper for you mm. to, to do the work. Mm. And uh, when, when they were doing the work, when they, were, they, they did that, they trained, they, they met people, made more disciples, and even Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Uh, so there is that if you are going to be a godly leader or a leader inspired by God, you must be willing to be mentored. I think there is in the in the world today or the way of the world there are all these people who say I'm a man I'm a my own man I'm, I'm self made I'm self made they, that's not godly mm. you can't be self made if you uh, if you are you can't be god dependent and be self made mm. there are people who have gone before you and there are people you are supposed you have a responsibility to to, to be an example too, that they will imitate you, that they, you can say like, Paul, oh, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So that mentorship, that, you know, that whole process continues the godly leadership. Godly leadership cannot be sustained without mentorship. And I think that is something that leaders need to be aware of, mentoring others. Yeah. Thank you so much, Honorable. Uh, I want to zero it down to our experiences as we grew up in the leadership yeah. journey. And I know that so many leaders, so many upcoming leaders will probably relate with what you are talking about and what you will even share regarding what your personal journeys have been. I love what John F. Kennedy says regarding leadership and learning. Yeah. He says leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. Mm -hmm. Dr. Eki. Looking back to the young you, and I am not insinuating that you are any older. Retirement <laughs> <laughs> actually looks very good on you. <laughs> yes, Dr. Eki, looking back at the young version of you as a leader, what lessons do you wish you had learned then that you know now? Um. I think. 
let me say this, that as leaders, first of all, we are public, mm. a leader, you know, mm -hmm. but we mustn't for, forget the importance of family. Mm -hmm. Because family gives you the springboard mm -hmm. where you are going to dive into your leadership roles, mm -hmm. the public of you, know, the public you. Mm -hmm. You need a strong family. And whenever now I read somebody's profile, mm -hmm. I want to know, is this man married? How many children? And I start wondering, what role does his wife play? in his leadership. Do they listen to them? Do they know how important this partner is? So coming back to me, I was really helped um, in those leadership roles when I was married. Because here was somebody who was for me. So I could tell him I'm afraid, I could bounce things off him, and he would be the one to say, no, 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 there, you, maybe you shouldn't, maybe, what does God say here? So it was very useful, okay, having this person <coughs> in my life as a kind of an assistant leader. He, he would be the one to say, you know, this is, I think, what God is saying. But also as a young person, I always thought that leaders are right, they know everything. Mm. Okay, I'm <laughs> supposed to know everything. Yeah, uh, otherwise, encyclopedia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would not be um, comfortable to say I don't know. Mm. Okay? Mm. But as I grew up, um, in my work with Jesus, but also in my understanding of my role as a leader, I appreciated the team. Working with the team, knowing that within that team, people are gifted differently. Mm -hmm. And the feeling of uh, you know, being secure to say, so and so do this, okay? Mm -hmm. And feeling secure that they, they will do it without undermining my leadership. If anything, if things have d been done very well, it will be you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. you know. And um, the, is, is the temptation is to take it all mm -hmm. <laughs> without mentioning the team. Mm -hmm. So it, it has been a learning curve, and mm -hmm. I've um, appreciated it and enjoyed it, that you can um, as a leader, identify gifts among the people you lead and encourage them to use those gifts for the overall good, okay? If our goal is there, how can these various people I'm leading be part of that goal? So that is inclusive. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not kind of prophet so and so who hears from God and therefore. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that has been a journey, and now as a, in my positions of leadership, I'm so comfortable to let others also do what I might be expected to do as a leader, but why struggle when I have these gifts around me? Mm -hmm. And it, it, makes, uh, it makes the team feel included, mm -hmm. and whatever we are doing, they are part of it. That has been my journey. Thank you, Dr. Mm. Eki. As you talked about family being a springboard, I remembered many years ago while I was at Uganda Christian University as a student, we had uh, this enthusiastic chaplain later grew through the ranks to become vice chancellor. <laughs> and his words keep re echoing in my mind. He would keep <coughs> saying, my family is my priority. Because mm. when everything is said and done, mm -hmm. I will go back to them. Mm. Very powerful. Uh, thank you so much. Canon Edward, maybe there is a leader out there that feels, well, I have not been depending on this God they are talking about. Mm -hmm. Is there hope for me? Do I start in between or if I didn't start with him, 
I am finished. Is there a hope for a leader that has not been depending on God, that has not been that God-dependent leader, for them to, to start afresh and rewrite a new chapter, or mm. it is done? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, the <coughs> I want to, to, to re-echo the, the words that I think John mentioned about growing. Uh, growing. Growing spiritually, growing in leadership is a long life process. We keep on growing. And as we keep on searching and seeking to do the will of God, because God is a God who reveals himself. Mm. We do not deal with a God who hides himself. It's not, he doesn't play that game, hide and seek. <laughs> He's a God who reveals himself. Mm. So if we, have, if we have done what we have said, mm. eh, we say that a leader must be a man of the word of God. Mm. We have also said that a leader must be a person who spends time with the God in the prayer. Mm. Now, if you have been there and you have not been reading the word of God, then you will better start. Mm. Because that's the starting point. Mm. If you have been there and you have not prayed, then you need to go back to that. Mm. You know, <clears throat> this the a, a good leader is a person who feels inadequate. Mm. Mm. <coughs> a person who knows it all mm. cannot make a good leader. Mm. Mm. A good leader is a person who feels inadequate. And when you feel inadequate, mm. you must run to the source. You must go and say, Lord, I'm not able to do this. Mm. Mm. And Jesus said it to his disciples, as Sarah was saying, as he mentioned with them, he said, without me, you can do nothing. And sometimes we think that we are doing great things when we are actually doing nothing. <laughs> we, 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 we are destroying what others have done. We are destroying what we could have built because we think we know it all and we don't go to God. And we don't also uh, talking of, 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 of resources. We don't, we don't work with other people. We don't mm -hmm. work with other people. Mm -hmm. uh, if, 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 if you are a, a, a leader of an organization, you are, not, you are not alone in leading organizations. So you need to consult. Mm -hmm. You need to consult other people because you cannot know it all. Mm -hmm. So the feeling of inadequacy or of adequacy mm -hmm. is a disservice to us. Mm -hmm. We must feel adequate. And therefore, if we feel inadequate, we will read the word of God, because that's how we know God. Mm. And we will read, we will, we will go into prayer. Mm. But if you have been there and you have been doing these things and you realize, but I really didn't have God in my life. <laughs> mm. <laughs> because you can do that, you can realize, but surely I don't think, uh, of all the things they have said, I don't even have the enthusiasm to do that. <laughs> then the the Lord the Lord's hands are open to welcome you. Yeah. He says, Come to me, all you who labor, and I have a lady, and I will give you rest. Because God welcomes us. As I said, God is not in a hide and seek. Anybody who seeks God will find him. So anybody there who feels, yes, I'm in leadership, I've been doing very well, but I want to do better, and I want to do it for the glory of God, mm. can accept the Lord Jesus Christ in his life, mm. and, and he will start from there. Mm. So the, the important thing is to spend time with God. And mm. when you realize you don't have him, you ask him to come into your life, mm. and God will come into the life of anybody when we started, we said every leader who is there has been instituted by God. By God. Yeah. But we know, uh, we know that very many did it do the work of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are there and you realize you are instituted by God, but you are far away from God, mm -hmm. 
will come to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. If I may just add something to that, mm -hmm. um, to your question, uh, when the leader is not doing well, one of the greatest temptations in positions of leadership mm -hmm. is to think and he has said it well, that you are adequate in everything and you never make any mistake. Mm. Now, leaders make mistakes. The question is, what do they do when those mm. mistakes arise? Mm. And it's very, let me just use the example of, I mean, as an evangelist, sometimes I've preached and I know there are leaders out there, and I've never heard some of these leaders actually confess Christ and uh, you are inviting them to, you are inviting people to come to christ and they look on, mm. as if for them they don't need <laughs> and they are convicted and some of them have talked to me after mm. you know mm. they are convicted mm. that pride that is actually pride mm. pride is a terrible terrible thing mm. god will not continue walking with you mm. into your pride mm. you either decide to say i'm really sorry I've done something wrong, and then you come back. Mm. So it's not, that's really even beyond giving your life to Christ. You should also realize that repentance was not made for the led. Mm. It was made for all of for us. All of us. Mm. And repentance is the way back. Mm. Mm. Now, one of the problems that I have seen more recently, increasingly, most preachers, you try to listen to preaching. Mm. Most preachers never talk about repentance. Even when they are inviting you to come to Christ, you are coming to Christ so that you may have food, so that you may <laughs> get a visa, so that you may be well, so that you may, so that God can solve all your problems. Mm. And it's like God has become a vendor mm. of welfare, mm. you know, <laughs> and people no longer mm. repent. I think that and they misunderstood the song Jesus paid it all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying that, uh, you know, when you're a leader, you also mm. need to learn to say, I am sorry. I am sorry. Mm. Let people hear, let people know you are really on the ground. Mm. And I think that was mentioned mm. earlier. Yes. Rather than thinking that for you, everything, you're above, you're you're above those things. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes, we are coming to a cross, and uh, I will invite Dr. Eki in one minute. What do you want today's leader to remember about what we have talked today? Um, thank you very much. Today we have emphasized the fact that uh, there must be a relationship um, between the leader and God. The leader must have that relationship in order to be inspired by God. Mm. You can't depend on somebody you don't know, somebody you don't trust. So there must be that relationship. Secondly, the leader has to appreciate that um, he's in that position because God willed it to be. Okay, God put him there. And this throws the leader back to my first point. Therefore, you become more dependent. Thirdly, is what um, Dr. John has just said, a leader will make mistakes, mm. therefore a leader must know how to apologize. Mm. Mm. I think those are the three things we really want to, mm. um, the viewers to appreciate about an inspired leader. Great thoughts. Yes. Uh, Honorable Sarah, your parting shots. <laughs> I think for me, uh, I can only say that uh, our viewers need to understand that inspired leadership, uh, God-inspired leadership is the only way, um, is the, the best, it's the only way to, to influence this world meaningfully and also to influence eternity. Because, you know, we are here, this is, this is part one mm. of our lives. Mm -hmm. There is a part two to which we have been called to bring others into that world. Mm -hmm. And we cannot influence that world, mm -hmm. who will be in that world of eternity. You know, eternity is either eternity in hell or in heaven. Mm -hmm. We are working for the eternity of heaven. God-inspired leadership is the only way to influence for uh, eternal, in, in, in heavenly etern eternity. Mm -hmm. 
if you are inspired by God, you are able to inspire others to mm. that mm. point. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much. You want to lead, you are looking for the way, you are at crossroads. Like Honorable Sarah has just concluded us, the God-dependent way is the only way. There is no other shortcut. Probably you have heard about other ways, but the call was very crystal clear. That come to the only way, and then you will lead and influence, not just for the time here on earth, but even for the time to come. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we wish you a God-dependent leadership. I think when we next come uh, in other leadership talk series, I will ask what levels do we start counting uh, the leader at? Is that woman in her kitchen at home nursing children a leader or the leader is yeah. the CEO as, as we know it? <laughs> yeah, those are the questions that we will be answering. So you don't want to touch the dial, you want to keep it family TV, you want to keep gleaning from the wisdom of these great men and great women who are being vulnerable to us, sharing their life journey, being extremely authentic, and I hope you have learned a lesson or two. And until next time, the Lord bless you.